Hey there, this is Cameron and you are watching Motion Science. And today I'm going to show you um, how I went from a particle preset from Stardust Luminal. And you can see the preset here. It's under uh, Models Miscellaneous. It looks like this, very basic. But I'm gonna show you how I went from that to this, to this. And it's all based on a preset. So here I am back in After Effects. I'm going to create the preset or apply the preset. Moving the layer back one frame so that it's not a black frame at the very beginning. And then all I have to do is add a new camera. And the camera that I'm using here is a 135 millimeter camera. So it's a very long lens. Now I'm just gonna add keyframes uh, at the beginning of my timeline so that um, I have an interesting angle. So I'm gonna rotate the camera and I'm going to position the camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and input uh, specific numbers that I know work for the camera that make an interesting angle. Now we're gonna go back into the particle system and under model, we're going to turn the extrusion from 1400 down to 100. And there you can see now the shapes, the octagon shapes that I used uh, in the system. Under turbulence, we're gonna change it to sphere. So it's only affecting a specific area of the uh, particle field. I'm gonna play around a little bit with the uh, turbulence randomness, as well as the amount of turbulence. I'm also going to increase the size of the sphere of turbulence. So now there's a lot of turbulence going on affecting the plane of the particle system. Now we're going to bring in some music. This is some music that I found off of Epidemic Sound. And it's just the bass line of the music. And it'd help if I brought the sound in where we can actually hear the sound. So I need to bring that back in time until we see the waveform. So a really cool bass sound. Next, I'm going to convert the audio of the bass into keyframes under Animation Assistant. I'm gonna delete the left and right channels, so I'm only left with both channels. And here's where the magic happens so the particles react to the audio. Under the uh, turbulence field here, we're gonna add an expression and it's interpolation, ease, time, min, max, and then value. So under time, all we have to do is highlight the T for time and then pick whip that time to the slider for the amplitude of the audio. Now we need to go into that amplitude, those keyframes, look at the graph editor, the value graph, and see where those numbers are falling. And the highest numbers are up in the high 50s and the low numbers are down around zero. So that tells us that if we add in a minimum value of zero to a maximum value of 50 to 60, we can say, okay, we want those values to affect the turbulence by X amount, which is what we're gonna do here. So now all we have to do is highlight the expression areas. So we're gonna do the minimum first, and we're gonna highlight the minimum. We're gonna change that to a low number and then the maximum to a higher number at 50 to 60. And then we're gonna change the values. 
And I found that these actual numbers work uh, quite well for the values. So you can see there that the turbulence is being affected by the keyframes from the audio. So that's the big magic. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna duplicate the turbulence field and bring the second turbulence further back in space. Okay, so I like how that's looking. So the next step is to uh, add some lights. And we're gonna use spotlights, and we're going to tint these lights like a light pinkish color. So already our particle systems are starting to look more interesting. So now we'll just play around with the positioning of the lights uh, to get them to where we just, you know, they look just right to us. And then by duplicating that spotlight and bringing a second light back in Z space, we can light the backlights like you see here to give it a little more depth. Next, we're going to start adding some effects. And the first effect we're gonna add is the camera lens blur. This is just uh, using the camera lens blur that comes with After Effects and keyframing it to the audio. So what I did is I went through, I went through and I found sections of the music that I liked that I felt like the camera needed to blur in and out of focus with those sections of music. So I went through and I keyframed all of that, which you'll see here. And this is all just a matter of taste, but it's just going through and fine tuning, you know, when the camera comes in and out of focus with the music and what works and what doesn't. So next what I decided to do was uh, set keyframes for the camera so that it moved in closer to the scene as time progressed to make the scene a little more interesting and a little more interesting movement. You can see here it looks a little more interesting now. So next I decided to create another adjustment layer and add some additional effects to that which is uh, my color effects. For this, I used color balance and I adjusted the blues as well as the greens and again, the blues. Next, I applied a, another adjustment layer, which I called Effects. And I started with my favorite plugin, which is Glow. It has just a really nice overall soft look to it. Then I applied a tent effect and I decrease the amount of tint to give it a little more desaturated look. 
I also added a curves, very basic S curve. Give it a little more contrast. And a lot of times I'll turn effects off and on to see what's working and what's not and if things need to be adjusted or not. Then I added a red giant looks effect. And I really liked a preset that I found in the looks package. So I applied that. You can see it immediately gave it just a more contrasty feel. Then I added overall grain. And I liked the way this looked, but there was one thing missing, which was just increasing these one few little settings here for the uh, highlight areas of the depth of field effect. And it completely changed the look of it. And that's how I got this look. So that's it. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this short tutorial and I hope you learned something new from it. So until next time, I'm Cameron and this is Motion Science.